condition is permanent if it were when I was a Christian a preacher I will use it as a declaration divine declaration to prove that the anointing of God is upon me I say every mouth that spoke evil against you we speak good about you and you say amen <laughs> you see the year amen I said, you know, but used to tell them all, his followers used to tell them, say the loudest, amen. Are you here? Turn that out. Amen. It's just empty wish. People gathering and wishing something be true, living on assumption. And that assumption cement their delusion that they are out to hate or kill for it. But that's why I'm here. That's why the Wook Nation is here. Because no condition is permanent. Our people will wake up. Because our people have been believing and singing our ignorance as the truth to live by. When you listen to some of our sayings, today some of the words of our so-called elders you know you will understand why our people seem to be deep in that delusion and i've been trying to open our eyes to see why we are suffering why we are where we are why it seems to be dangerous to live among our people if you care about the factual truth but you know my motto, or one of my mottos, no condition is permanent. Greetings, my dear. So welcome to the Woke Nation, dear family and friends. Our nation of factual truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faint. Where every issue is talked about and there is no issue that is too sensitive or too secretive for us to talk about. We can talk about whatever we want because it affects us. Our people say that Okwa na Sanya, Anahebibo, the wars you refuse to discuss or, you know, the trouble you refuse to discuss or to tackle now, it will never end. It will never end when it's supposed to end. Just as you see black people still living in bondage because they don't want to tackle their problem, the cause of their problem and deal with it and begin to live as our great ancient African ancestors once lived. But again, no condition is permanent. It doesn't matter where you are in this life. This was, if it stick with you, you will make it. No condition is permanent. Understand that. So also, this is the nation where we encourage one another, encourage us to live our life 
well. And the only way you can live your life well is through the knowledge of factual truth. Not by wish. We, we, are, we, are, not born, we are not born to be wishful people. No. We, we are born to live. We are not creatures. No. We are not created creatures. No. We are living beings. We, we are born to live, explore, dream, desire, choose, determine, and experience and enjoy life naturally. Not this stupid life most of us are living today, thinking we cannot live life well without money. Mm. Thinking that we cannot live our life well without certain people. Thinking that life has no meaning until we go to foreign land. Well, I was thinking about it. Imagine the people that believe, they say that the Lord is their shepherd. They shall not want. It makes them to lie down in green pastures. Now they are telling you they are seeking for greener pastures in white man's land. <laughs> they are seeking for greener pasture in human beings' land. But they say their God made them to lie down in green pasture. So there is a better land. There is a better pasture than their pasture. There is a greener pasture. And that greener pasture is what? The factual truth. Science. Good things, of, I mean, great things of life, not good things of life. Religion gives you good things, but life gives you great things. Nature gives you great things, or nature have great things for you. So, you, we, we should understand, or we should dare to know that we were born to live, explore, and enjoy this life naturally. Not spiritually, not religiously. No. Spirituality is a belief. Religion is a belief. How long will you live in a belief? They tell you, blessed is one who did not see but believe. That's nonsense. You must be stupid to believe without seeing. You say you want to believe. Good and fine for you. Then see what you believe. They say, no, you, will see, you only see what you believe after death. Can't you see you are dumb to continue believing that nonsense? Don't believe. Dare to know. If you don't know it, don't believe it. Mm -mm. If you don't know it, don't believe it. Ask questions. Demand for answers and worship nothing. When you believe without knowing, you are worshipping what you don't know. No condition is permanent. So one of the things that have been destroying our people, destroying our land, is the concept they gave us about this world. Remember, I didn't say our concept of this world. I said the concept they gave us about this world in spirituality, in religion. And one of the things they taught us against is death, which is supposed to be our best thing in life. But many people believe death is that, death is that, death is killing them. Well. So they taught us nonsense about this world. And you see people seeking for their destiny somewhere or seeking, as I said earlier, for greener pastures somewhere while their land is all they need and is there. I was listening to people arguing. He said that the law, the law, the, the, the basic law for all, all economics like you know, you want to become world power, land and the level. I say, but Africans have land. Huh? But they're not laboring to develop their land. All Africans need to develop their land is in their land. They don't need any foreign help. It's foreigners that is coming, taking our land, even forcing us into labor. That, that's why they enslave us. You cannot slave stupid people or people that don't know anything. People you enslave are people that are builders, wise builders, because you don't want to pay for the labor. You force them to work for you without pay. You only feed them and clothe them. But you're not paying them for the great things. That the one that build a house for you, build road for you, build school for you, build everything you have. But you're so evil, you're so wicked, you don't want to pay them. You say they are your slaves. Our people wake up. Our people have believed nonsense, a lot of nonsense about this world. 
about life, about death, that you see them living a stupid life, a useless life they don't supposed to live. Even looking at those, they, 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 they think brought them good things. They're supposed to ask, these people, you know, they are human beings also, or they believe, we believe what they believe, God created us. So why are they living better than us? But they also believe the lie. No, it is how God made it. You know, God made us all, but he chose to bless some people. Oh, I was thinking about it. I said, how can you tell me God is blessing me to bless those that don't have? When, when God is supposed to bless all of us, why are you telling me some people don't have? When we all, you claim that we have one God, we have a creator. So he can bless me to bless others. He cannot bless them equally. He created us equally. We have the same bread, brain everything. We have equally, right? But when it comes to power, when it comes to prosperity, no, there are people God bless and not others. That's why I said, yeah, it is in religion. Everything religion say is for people who are, who are religious, not for people like myself. Yeah, in religion, you have poor and rich. In nature, there is no poor and rich. No, everyone is equal. We equally rich. There is no poor and rich in nature. All of us are rich. It is only religious people that is making life unbearable for innocent people, for people that are living their life. They begin to invade, attack, destroy, kill, kidnap, enslave, colonize evil people. Somebody asked me in boss, but I never, I don't want to respond because I've been saying that. You still asking me a question, something, if you open my wall, at least when you go about one to five posts, you must hear where I tell you you know about evil you say where did evil come from it's simple from god and a rich girl white people it's not from your ancestor <laughs> okay so this i titled welcome home welcome to your eternal abode i want you to know this the world or the earth or the universe is your eternal home. You were not born outside your home. And you cannot live outside your home. Do you hear what I say? You were not born outside your home. And you cannot live outside your home. Any concept, any idea, any notion, any belief, of living outside your home is illusion. Or oh, living your home is illusion. That's why our ancestors knew that death is an illusion. We don't die. We transform. We change. Oh man. There is no heaven or hell as religious people taught us. Heaven and hell is fairy lands fairy lands where is filled with fairies imaginary beings that's where that's why in such land where that's where you find god that's where you find angels that's where you find dragons that's where you find animals with multiple heads or multiple legs in the fairy land not in a real place heaven and hell is not a place for anyone born of a woman. Are you born of a woman? You cannot go to hell. You cannot go to heaven. Because you are at home. This is your eternal home. Heaven and hell is wishful fantasy. For faithfuls. When you, you, they are good with you. They wish you heaven. When they are not in good terms with you. They wish you hell. Especially those of your family members and your friends. Because they are so religious. But now you are no more and you are bold enough to tell them about it. They wish bad thing happen to you. They wish you get drowned. They wish something kill you to prove that their, their God is true. It's because you left their God. That's why bad thing is happening to you. No! Batten only happened to all those religious people when you call it Batten. 
If you put yourself in harm's way, you will get harmed. Harmed. It's not. It has nothing to do with God. Let me say, maybe uh, I'm right here. This house collapsed, and everyone in the building. I'm there. All of us die, right? It's not a bad thing. <laughs> we die. We come back. <laughs> to me, it's not a bad thing. But to believers, to religious people, it's bad thing. And you see them crying. Why are you crying when you believe you will go to heaven? You are you are born in a Christian or religious or Muslim or Jewish family. You all believe you will go to heaven. Then one of you dies and you are sorrowful. Why are you sorrowful? Don't you know that death is like going to the market? The market is not your place of living. It's a place of business. You're coming back home. Reincarnation. Come on, understand my people. I've been trying to open our eyes to this. Understand that you were born to live, explore, and enjoy this life. How can you live and explore and enjoy life without you knowing about life? Life is very simple. You want to know about life. Start with yourself. Look at yourself. Don't you see how great you are? Can't you see that? My people, death is not evil. That is one of the things the wrong they taught us, they brainwash us. We live in fear of death. I remember when I was growing up, if I hear that somebody dies, I will hardly sleep by my I don't want to walk in a dark place. No, I don't want to be. And I know when I defeated that. I thought when somebody died, that person may still touch you, they split, <laughs> you know, that nonsense they taught us. And you see our people singing their ignorance. Saying that death is, is evil when somebody dies. You know, it's not. It doesn't matter your age. Somebody say you will not die prematurely this, uh, this month. I say, why not? Why not? It's not bad to die. Just like it's not bad to sleep. You sleep and wake up. You die and come back. It's natural. I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm asking you to know it. Explore this life. That's why we are not inventors as our ancestors were. Because we are not exploring life. But we are wishing to experience it. We are wishing to experience life instead of exploring life. To enjoy it. Death is not evil. They taught us that nonsense. They also taught us that death is the murderer. Oh, the death came and murdered my mother. Mother, my father, mother, my sibling. No, death did not murder them. Death did them favor. Death is the door to the next level of life. Your life is eternal. That's why religion deceives you and tell you that no, believe in their God and their God will give you eternal life. Eternal life is not a gift. It is yours. It's like uh, how fellow was saying it. He said animals want to give human beings human rights. He said, no, you can't give me human right. He said, human right is my property. You can't give me my property unless you stole it. Then I'm going to take it back because you can't give it to me. I will take it back. Death is not a killer. Death is not a oh, my, uh, last, uh, Today, make it one year. My uh, death, death, is, uh, death killed my father, killed my mother. Wherever you are, rest on. You are stupid. You don't even know where they are. And you say, rest on. Rest on where? Who told you there is rest there? There is no there. They are not there. <laughs> they are already here. They are back. But you don't know. They went to market. You don't know they have returned. And you are crying. They are gone. No, they went to market. They did not go anywhere. They are still in this world. Hi. Another nonsense they teach us that death is a thief. And you see how people, when somebody dies, you see them go, they carry the person picture. And you see them destroying people's plant, destroying people's crop in the name of they are looking for their dead one. We are looking for our dead brother, especially when young one died. You, I know, you. I don't know how you are trying, how they do it in your tribe, but I'm Ibu man, so that's how our people do it. I know I have I've done all this growing up. 
because of the nonsense religion taught us. And you still see them go to church <laughs> to give the thanks to life well lived. Life well lived, and you say, full, heart full of sorrow, you are announcing the death of your loved one, blah, blah, blah. And you say you are thanking God that failed to keep that person alive. And you were sorrowful. But on Sunday, you become happy. Yeah, Thanksgiving. That's the life you are living. For six days, you have been sorrowful. Then on Sunday, you are happy. Yeah, thank God. In everything, give thanks to God. Stupid. Which God? That's why when I see our people saying, thank God to God, I, I say, useless God. I'm still doing it today. Nobody paid me for it. I'm the one using my time to do that. Useless God. Then you comment nonsense. I unfriend you. Or you come in boss to tell me nonsense. I fuck you there and they come out to remove you too. Unfriend you. Our people must wake up. And they will not wake up by you singing. <laughs> or by you petting them. No, you have to use water. Use whatever available. You stick. Bang them up. There's no nice way to speak the factual truth. No nice way. If you are, if there's any nice way to speak the factual truth, it's a lie. You are lying. You are not waking them up. You are keeping them in that delusion more. You are supporting what you are against. So you are just as ignorant as them. Understand that death is not your enemy. Death is not evil. Death is not a murderer. Death is not a thief. You were not born to live a godly life. Godly life is a, is a fake life. Just as God is fake. You were born to live humanly, naturally, physically. You're talking about spiritual world in the physical world. You are stupid. Go to spiritual world and talk. Go and talk to people in spiritual world. Don't they, don't they wrote in their book that Jesus went to hell and preached to the spirits there. So go and preach to the spirits here. No, no, not here on earth. No. Death. Uh, let me uh, say it again slowly so you understand. Death. It's like going to the market for a while, but you will come back home later. That is what is called reincarnation. You die, you come back. You went to market, you come back. So what is, oh, I mean, what the word is not is the next thing I want to share you, share with you. Because they keep telling you that the world is like a marketplace. It's not true. That's the nonsense even our elders believe in. Uh, this world is like a marketplace. Uh, you know, you come and you buy your own and then you go. No, the world is not a marketplace. The world is not like a marketplace. It is even people that have turned this world like a marketplace. It's not a marketplace. It is your eternal home. Death is the one, or the grave is the marketplace. You go there to come back. Death is like going to the market. You die to go to grave and you come back to life. Yeah, you come back to life, not as a ghost, but as a living spirit, human being. <laughs> At least some people have, I think it was this uh, Bob Marley that, uh, that sang it. A living man is a living God, right? Yet, you know, our people, they're so confused. Sometimes they sing what makes sense, sometimes they sing nonsense. So that's why they mix spirituality with nature. They tell you spirituality is understanding nature. No! Call a spade a spade. Call spirituality spirituality. Call nature nature. Don't tell me what uh, spirituality is understanding nature. That's nonsense. No. Telling me invisible is understanding visible. Oh, that's bullshit. Invisible is invisible. Visible is visible. Your heart is invisible. Your chest, uh, your, your, your chest, yeah, the one your pan is visible. Where is your chest? <laughs> your heart is invisible. Your chest is visible. You don't tell me no. The invisible heart 
is understanding the visible chairs. Mm -mm. It doesn't go that way, my people. The world is not marketplace. It is your eternal home. Secondly, or uh, number two, the world is not a strange place. You are not a stranger in this world. Are you a stranger in your house? Is it possible for you to be a stranger in your house? Unless you are drunk. Then you see yourself as a stranger in your house. And that's what religion has done to us. Religion has made us to think that our house, that uh, in our house, we are strangers there. We are going to leave it for another better place. There's no better place than your house. There's no better place than your home. And you say charity begins at home. You are not a stranger in this world. I, I, but I, I, I know, uh, oh, you, know, anyway, I won't care. you are stu our people are so stupid that they think singing it or believing it or trying to live like that is is a way or uh, is the truth. No, we are not visitors in this world. We are not strangers. No, we are not. This is our eternal home. That's why we should do what we should develop it. We should do what we, we so, we're supposed to be innovative and uh, and 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 and, um, and inventive. You know, imagining things and bringing it to reality. Not imagining things and think there is God, there is ancestors that will be there. No, we are the one that we build it. We are the one that we we don't need to consult any God or any spirit, living or dead, in another world. You want to tell me about another world? No. Tell me about our world, where we are in right now. We are no strangers here. The third one. The world is not a useless place. It's not a vanity place. It is religion that taught you that nonsense. You hear religious people saying, Oh no, this world, you know. This world is vanity upon vanity. Whatever you have is vanity. You, you, oh, you saying you have that thing. You will leave it and die soon. You will see God will do this. No. God is the temple. He is the one that does not use. God is the useless one. God is the one you're supposed to discard. Not the things of life you have. When I was a believer, when I was a preacher, I used to preach that nonsense. I said the things of this world. I heard it like this. And if, if, if then I just drop it. I don't put that's nonsense. Religion taught me, and I was using First Corinthians chapter seven to support that nonsense. It's the nonsense I read in the Bible, and I apply. I begin to apply it to this world. You see, people telling you this world is a useless. It's not. Our people say, "Ebonye bikonawachi." If you know that this is your home, this is your world, you will begin to develop it and make it comfortable for yourself. So even when you go to market and come back, remember what it means to go to market and come back? When you die and go to grave, you come back home. When you go to market and come back home, that's yeah. When If you know that when you die, you will come back to this world, you see, you will die. You will, you will endeavor, I mean, to make it a better place. You think our ancestors were building all those things just for them to make a name? Just only that? Yeah, making a name is good. So when you come back, you will still see your name. But not at the detriment of others. Not destroying others. Not killing others unnecessarily. Hmm. The world is not a useless place. And nothing you have in this world is vanity. Because you, know, you will die and leave it soon. You, see, you will die and leave it. And you see poor people, wicked people, evil people, wishing you die and leave it. Oh, you, okay, you, you, you now you have car, you have this, soon you will die and leave it. <laughs> you will go. Would you die also and leave it, whatever you say you have? Yeah, you will die and leave that God. You will die and leave that Jesus. You will die and leave that religion. You will die and leave that Allah. You will die and leave that faith. Come on, wake up, my people. You were born to create. You are a born creator. You are not a created creature. 
you are a born creator. God simply means one or something that creates. You are not a creature. You are not as useless as God. You were born to create. You say God created. A God that created and that cannot create does not exist. Human being created and human being still creating. That's why you see us in Bethlehem. Yesterday they announced the new iPhone. Which I will get. <laughs> iPhone 13 <laughs> Pro Mass. I will get it. It's no longer when you used to go to where you pay. They do, they do the uh, uh, die, die, die. Uh, no. Or uh, when you use uh, uh, at least Samsung made the new fly, uh, flip phone again. You know, it keep coming. There's nothing new under the sun, except your religion, your ignorance, your fear. The world is not a useless place. Be useful to yourself. Be useful to others. The question is this, are you a problem solver or problem creator? You were born to create. You are a born creator. You are the born creator. Because some people will say, you know, okay, God is the creator. Uh, I am a creator. No, I'm not a creator. I am the creator. Man created God. God did not create any man. God cannot create any man. And that's why it is man who is telling you that God created you. God can no God can show up and claim to claim, create you. It is always people deceivers who are coming to tell you that nonsense to deceive you and control you. Once you believe their lies, they have decept, deceived you, and they will control you. Trash them and live your life free. The fourth one: the world is not a wicked place. Oh man, it's always in the lips of Christians. This wicked world, I don't know much about Muslims, so I talk about people I know. So, you know, whatever religious people you know, you know, they are dissenting everywhere. The world is not a wicked place. This world, that you experience something from wicked people who happen to be taste, people that believe in God also, does not make the world a wicked place. No! That's why you have your two legs. If a place you are is wicked to you, people living around you are wicked to you, walk away. Go to another, migrate, go to another way. Migration or migration should teach you that there's no place God planted you say you must be there. That's where you must live. No, you can migrate. You can go so, somewhere else and live your life well. And that's what our ancestors were doing. That's why they weren't going about taking other people's land. No, you don't feel well as, okay, this is our rule here. You don't like it. Go. Go somewhere else. Nobody will bother you. Until the evil people came, say, even if today you say well, they are coming after you, you must pay this, you must do that. They make people pay him for bullshit. Religion is the one that brought wickedness to this world. And religion is evil. Religion is wicked. Who are the people destroying this world? Religious people everywhere. Religious people are the ones destroying this world. They brought war against peaceful people. They brought war against this peaceful people, which is hate. They hate you, then they come after you. And when you read your Bible, Malachi chapter 1, and also in book of First Corinthians, uh, Romans, he said that when children... Talking about Esau and Jacob in their book, for you to see the origin of hate, origin of war. He said, Their God said, Esau, I hate. Children that are still in the womb, but they don't know anything. He said, Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. That's how we come to know about hate, about evil, religion. Religion brought war, religion brought de deception. Religion brought division. Religion brought destruction. And the most deadly one among all this one is delusion. When people are deluded, they are living like animals. They will be proud to be slaves, good slaves. You will see them happy. And say, yeah, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Happy slaves. God is the originator of evil and religion created God. And God probably say in their book, I create 
evil. All these atrocities, I'm the one doing it. Yet you hear thesis of Christians blaming Satan, blaming devil. Why their God say he's the one doing it? He's responsible for your misery. Your God is responsible for your evil, for your misery, for your, for, for, for your downfall. Whatever you are suffering in this life, your God is responsible for it. Not the devil. Not me. Not your lack of faith. Before you tell me Jesus is your Prince of Peace, listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, 51 to 53. He said, do not think I come to bring peace. No. Say I come to bring division. To turn man against his children. Children against their father, against their mother. Mother against her daughter. Daughters against mother. To, divide, to destroy family unity, to destroy family. When you, dis, when, you dis, when you divide people, you destroy their prosperity. They cannot prosper anymore as a people because they are divided. Even you, when you have divided mind, you cannot think well, no, you, cannot, you cannot do anything well. Even things you know how to do, you begin to make uh, blunder into and you, some, sometimes you get fired. Something, but because you are, you are, your mind is divided, maybe family pressure or whatever is going on around you, then it makes you to commit that blunder and you get fired for it. The final one I want to speak on today is this world is not under God's control. This world is not under God's control. God did not create this world. And if you say you believe God created this world, but you cannot show me that God, you are stupid. And you are more stupid if you don't accept that it were, it were your ancestors that created this world. In Job chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, he show you there, he said that God has given this world into the hand of the wicked. He blind the eyes of the judges. They judge against innocent people. Putting them in prison and all, all that. He said, if it's not God, tell me who. You who believe God created all things and this world is under the control of God. Then who is responsible for all those evil, evil politicians, evil leaders that is making life miserable and bearable to people? You see the few, you call the elite or elites make, ruling over others and you think that is normal way to live. And you see the poor masses campaigning for them, voting for them. Instead of them to revolt and say enough is enough. All of us are supposed to have free health care. We're supposed to have free right. Everything you're having free as a politician. Everybody in the land. Everybody in the land is supposed to have them. You see the lie they put in the book. They tell you the earth is the laws and the fullness that is a lie. He said he has established established what? Start with your own life and business. Did God establish your business? No, you establish your business. Some of you, your family sell their land to establish your business. Some of you, you serve somebody to establish your business. You saved money to establish your business. God can't even, but you believe God established this world. God gave you life. God gave you life. You are stupid. In Acts 17, he said that God made the boundaries, you know, he made us from one blood. That's a lie. This world is not under the control of God, it's under the control of men. And you black people, you Africans, it is, it is high time you understand this and begin to live as a people. Stop trying to fit in the system that white men establish. Begin to wake up. Yes, it will take time, but we get there. No condition is permanent. God is imaginary. God is speechless. God is inactive. And God is man-made. If you believe in God, you are delusional. If you worship God, you are delusional. If you believe God created this world, you are delusional. You are stupid even to yourself. Especially when you are educated one. Who can do research, but you refuse to do research. Because you are living in fear. And ignorance. Say no, God created you. Who created you? Hey, imagine a professor. 
A professor asked him illiterate like me, who created me? <laughs> who created this world? I'm an intelligent illiterate. <laughs> I'm intelligent. Okay, you can speak all your word, but I know how to express myself. You cannot take that away from me. And I know the factual truth. God is not in charge of anything. If you are God in charge of anything, you won't be suffering. It's like telling me your father is in charge of food supply and you are dying of hunger. What type of father is that? Will you call that your father? Will you be proud of that father? Of course, religion may make you be proud of your wicked father. But uh, some people in America, I like them. No. I will never forget that lady. I don't know her, but she commented on a post on, on Google. People were talking about, I know, I think on Facebook on my marriage, and the people are talking about how wonderful their mother. You know, our people lie when it comes to their mother, especially mother. The mother that uh, they just because he gave birth to you. Yeah, my mother is my mother is my, I can't have another mother. Oh, can you have another father? Hmm? You can have another mother. The same way you can have another father if you want. <laughs> they stop separating father and mother. Okay, you know, mother, mother. My mother is my God. No, your mother is not your God. Your mother don't know how you have even for all she did, she carried you. Your mother is your container. <laughs> no, not your creator. You are not a creature. Yeah. Listen. Ebonye bikona washi. Where you live is where you should develop. Where you do whatever you're supposed to do to make life good. This world is where you live. In this world you live, in this world you move, in this world you have your being. God did not create anything in this world. And God did not give you anything in this world. God cannot take anything from you in this world. It is your world. It is your life. Live in this your world. It is your eternal home. You are not going to any heaven or any hell after here. There is no after here. Here, This is where you are eternally. Mm. Guard your home. Build your home. Without God. And in closing, let me read it in the Bible for you to understand. Remember, the Bible, the Bible was not written for you to live by it. It's to keep you away from your truth. So those of us that know how to decode it or know how it has been written and know how to interpret it well to open your eyes, we can boldly tell you that everything written in the Bible is a lie. Okay, so for you to know actually how we read, listen. Okay. Let me read it with a new international version um, and see how it goes. He said, now the whole world had one language. It's talking about black people. When the Bible is telling you about the whole world, Telling you about the whole world, you know, darkness was uh, was upon the face of the deep. He's talking about black people, the original people. He said, now the whole world had one language, African language. Although it's not one, but they say one. We speak differently, but it's one language. Talking about agreement, they were living as a people. They were living as human beings. One language. Okay. So now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, people move, as I said earlier, don't die in a spot at a spot. No, you are not feeling good there. You are not feeling great there. Move to another place. Move. Okay. He said, as people as people move eastward, the eastward does, you know, the rising of the sun, east. You know, he's talking about wisdom. It's only what you will use to move forward. Use your brain. They use they move eastward. They found a place in China and settled there. They found a place. They did not find God. They did not find any spirit. No. They did not consult any God. They are the one that decided to move eastward. And they found a place there. When you move, you will find. You cannot find while staying where they keep you. Move. Okay. And he said, verse 3. They said to each other. They say to each other, that's how people live. That's how you live humanly. Speaking to one another, say, come, 
let us make, not come, let us believe, not come, let us worship, no, not come, let us seek the Lord, no, not come, let us pray, no, he said, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly, they use brick instead of stone and the tar for mortar, okay, but the first building was stone, okay, but understand these people, they, want, they don't want you to know you are truth. The, all these secret society they call mansion, uh, mansion or whatever they call it today our ancestors we are the one that started all that building with stones where they were in the cave we are building already then they said come let us build not come let us pray not come let us beg not come let us sacrifice not come let us worship no come let us build ourselves a city it's our home Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Nothing wrong making name for ourselves, not your selfish self, but as a people making name for ourselves. Black people, Africans, wake up and begin to make name for ourselves again, not for your individual self, not for your only family self, no, for ourselves. Everything among us must be serving all of us. Whether it's politics, whether it's religion, whether it's spirituality, whatever it is in our land supposed to serve all of us. Not some of us, all of us. Let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole world or the whole earth. Otherwise, we will be useless. We will be disgraced will be a disgrace all over the world if we don't make a name for ourselves if we don't build a city for ourselves if we don't build things for ourselves we become disgrace all over the world is it not how we are today in the world as black people then here the evil evil came back he said but the lord white people but the lord white people but god white people came down to see the city and the tower the people we are building without God, without Holy Spirit, without Jesus, without angel, without any invisible being, without, uh, let us consult our ancestors. No. He said, the law said, white people said, if as one people speaking the same language, these black people have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. That is living humanly. Nothing we plan to do will be impossible for us. But you have been taught, no, it can never be possible unless with God. With God, nothing is possible. No, it's, I mean, with God, all things are possible. Without God, nothing is possible. And you see black people believe that nonsense. Then hear what white people say. That's, that's God. He said, come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So, the white people, the Lord, scattered them, scattered black people from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is how black people stopped building. Slavery came and stopped us from building. White people came and stopped us from building. And they kill our ancestors, burn down our libraries, seize our books, or destroy many of them, and then telling us that we are slaves, we don't know that. We, they, they begin to force us to learn their nonsense in schools, in religious places. And you see black people today saying, yeah, no, white people are smart. No. They are still building on your foundation. Whatever secret they have, they are using to build, they stole it from your ancestors. The bread they are giving to you is made from your ancest ancestors' bakery. They stole. But you are happy they are giving you bread. And you say, they love you. Yeah, they love me. Yeah, she loved my enemies. Come on, my enemies gave me bread when I was hungry. So, yeah, she loved my enemies. Isn't that a human thing to do? No. You must deal with your enemies. They come as evil. Then you can use evil to deal with them. Good can never, I mean, being good can never overcome evil person, no? When you are good, you will not resist evil person. Say so they stop building the city. 
Say that is why it was called Babel because there the Lord, white people, confused black people. From there, the white people, the Lord, scattered black people over the face of the whole earth. You see why you see black people everywhere? <laughs> we have been everywhere, but they came and they scatter us. Did they say, I'm in Nigeria? No, you're not. White people made you in Nigeria. You are not. And that's why you are suffering. See, everything white people touch in Africa is means the suffering of black people. Black people stop building when white people invaded and enslaved us. But no condition is permanent. This world is our eternal home. We will not allow strangers, white people, to keep occupying our home and stopping us from building our home. Don't give me that excuse. They will not allow you to invent anything. No, it's not true. They do the first thing first. Wake up. Equip yourself with your African power. It is called voodoo. It's a natural power. It's a scientific power. It has nothing to do with any spirit anywhere. No, it has everything to do with your ancestors. And you are your ancestors. It is time you wake up, equip yourself, also build your own weapon. Then stand and say, enough is enough. I'm taking back my land. And I'm building my city. I'm starting where my ancestors stop to make life better and greater. Gordon, boom.